I recently came across a puzzling comment from Alexander Graham Bell. Apparently he did not consider the telephone to be his greatest invention. Surely the telephone would rank as one of humankind's greatest inventions of all time. He thought one of his lesser known inventions was superior. In the second half of the video, I will demonstrate how to recreate Bell's greatest invention. The story begins here. This is the main street of Paris, Ontario, a small Canadian town located in southern Ontario. The Bell family lived here briefly after emigrating from Scotland. The downtown is well preserved. Many of the buildings date from the 19th century. There is a lot of history here, much of it related to the energy available in the Grand and Nith rivers. Water-powered mills made the community prosperous. But an event of August the 10th, 1876 made the community famous. On that date, Alexander Graham Bell sat at a desk in Robert White's shoe store and telegraph office. This very building. It is unoccupied today, but at this site 138 years ago, Bell connected his newly invented telephone receiver to the telegraph line and proceeded to complete the world's first long-distance phone call. The call originated 13 kilometers away in the Bell family home at Brentford. Despite static on the line, he was able to hear family and a group of friends singing and reciting poetry. The fidelity was such that he recognized his father's voice. Those present in Robert White's store on August the 10th, 1876, had witnessed something momentous. Communication was about to undergo a revolution. This is Bell's original drawing of the circuit used on that day. Interestingly, the circuit was powered by batteries located over 60 miles away in Toronto. The message was sent using this type of transmitter and received with this style of receiver. This device was created so that three people could sing as a group into the receiver. These instruments are housed in the Bell Homestead National Historic Site in Brantford, Ontario. Open year around, this gem of a museum is a must see for anyone interested in the Bell story. I mentioned that despite the success, Bell did not consider the telephone to be his greatest invention. I discovered this on a trip to Bedeck, Nova Scotia, home to the Bell National Historic Site. The Bell family spent much of their later years in Bedeck. The family estate here is still held by descendants of Alexander and Mabel. The museum at Bedeck is filled with Bell's inventions. His special genius is on display. One tiny item on display has particular significance. This is a selenium cell, and it is the key component in what Bell considered to be his most important invention, the photophone. Selenium has an unusual property. It is a poor conductor of electricity, like a resistor. But its resistance changes with light levels. Shine a bright light on selenium and it has low electrical resistance. In darkness, its resistance increases. Bell realized that if he could invent a way to use the vibrations of sound to modulate light, he could use selenium to intercept the light beam and modulate the flow of electricity through a speaker, essentially using light to transmit sound. This drawing from the period summarizes Bell's proposal. Sunlight strikes a special mirror, a flexible mirror. It will vibrate when sound waves from someone's voice strikes it. This vibrating mirror will modulate the reflected beam, causing it to vibrate sympathetically with the sound waves. This modulated light strikes a selenium cell at the listener's end. The varying resistance of the selenium cell modulates current flow through a speaker, recreating the voice communication. Incredibly, Bell made this work. This image shows his sophisticated photophone transmitter. It utilizes mirrors and lenses to direct and focus the light. 
At the other end, a parabolic reflector collects and focuses the modulated light onto the receiver's selenium cell. The modulated current creates sound in the receiver's speakers. Bell demonstrated this device on June the 3rd of 1880. Let's see if we can recreate the basic photophone. Photoresistors like this one are electronic components that behave like selenium. Light levels change their resistance. Many photoresistors use selenium. Connecting this photoresistor to an ohmmeter, we can see how its resistance changes with light levels. Increasing light levels lowers resistance, and darkness increases resistance. We will use this one in our photophone. I started with a coffee can. Cutting the bottom out of it, we're left with a cylinder. Cutting the center out of the plastic top creates a ring to hold the reflective mirror. I'm using aluminized mylar for the reflective surface. It is flexible and should vibrate when sound waves strike it. This material is sometimes found in outdoor stores as an emergency blanket. I bought this one at a dollar store. There are other flexible reflective materials, including aluminum foil. I use the plastic ring to secure the mirror. This is the transmitter. The receiving circuit looks like this a speaker, 6 volt battery pack, and a photoresistor. The photoresistor will control the flow of electricity in the circuit. One of the many advantages I have over Bell is a simple way to test this circuit. Fluorescent bulbs connected to a 60 cycle alternating current flicker at a rate of 120 Hz. Shine this fluorescent light on our photoresistor and we should be able to hear this flickering light as a hum. This circuit works, at least under these conditions we can hear the modulated light. Bell used sunlight for his photophone. I will do the same. The morning sun is shining through this east facing window, striking the mirror. The mirror is aligned with the sun so that light reflects onto the wall. Speaking into the transmitter, we can see the modulated light in the vibrating reflection on the wall. Test, test, test one, two, test, test, test one, two, test, test, test. Watching one, two, the mirror, test, we can see that test, it is vibrating. Test one, two, test, test, test one. I've mounted the photoresistor on a tripod and placed it in the reflected sunlight. The photoresistor is connected to the same circuit we used before. I have isolated the speaker at the end of a long cable and placed a recording microphone close to it. With everything connected, I speak into the transmitter. Test one, two. Test, test, test one, two. The mirror vibrates, modulating the light that is striking the photoresistor. Test one, two, test, one, two, test, one, two. Test. The isolated microphone detects sounds coming from the speaker. Sound is traveling on a light beam. Unfortunately, this is very poor quality sound. Barely discernible. I was able to improve the quality of this transmission by resorting to some modern materials. Items that Bell didn't have access to. An audio amplifier, capacitors for filtering, and solar cells instead of selenium cells. I also improved the reflective membrane, reinforcing the back of it with tape. 
The sound, still carried on a light beam, now sounds like this. Improved, but still barely audible. This project certainly increased my respect for Alexander Graham Bell. Working with 19th century knowledge and materials, he was able to send clearly audible sound on a light beam a distance of over 200 meters. This is remarkable. My barely audible transmission traveled only 5 meters. Bell was very excited by his success. In a letter to his father he wrote, I have heard articulate speech produced by sunlight. I have heard a ray of the sun laugh and cough and sing. The dream of the past year has become a reality. The photophone is an accomplished fact. Bell considered the photophone to be his greatest achievement. According to the Canadian Encyclopedia, near the end of his life, Bell stated, The photophone is the greatest invention I have ever made, greater than the telephone. Bell speculated that one day we would use his invention to listen to the stars. And it is fitting that Bell Labs played a major role in the development of fiber optic cable, including the first transatlantic fiber optic cable, light carrying communication between continents. Alexander Graham Bell had probably imagined this. The Bell Historic Site at Bedeck has a significant collection of Bell's inventions. A wonderful destination for anyone interested in this remarkable man. On our visit to Bedeck, we came across Alexander and Mabel sitting on a bench looking out over the bay toward the Bell Estate. They are buried here. Bell died August 2, 1922 and Mabel January 3, 1923. If you attempt to create your own photophone, Bell's notes and drawings are readily available. The Library of Congress in the United States has a huge collection, a great place to start your research. For more science and technology projects and videos, visit our website, hyloroad.com.